welcome to my channel. And what I'm going to talk about today is a couple of different things. I'm actually going to do this in a few different segments. So what I'm going to start off talking about is my living foods lifestyle and what raw foods have done for me and some of the things that I've not noticed big differences in because I think it's fair to say where I'm at on this journey, the, the ups and the downs and whatnot. So what I'm gonna start off by saying is some of the things that I have noticed since I've been on raw foods and throughout the journey is that I just keep getting better and better as time goes on. And I'll talk about some of the things that haven't gotten better first or haven't gotten much better. And there's not that much that hasn't gotten much better. Um, as far as I was an allergy sufferer, I suffer very little with allergies anymore. Um, I think that probably what I have noticed is that some of the nightshades, if I eat too many of them, that sometimes I will feel a little bit of congestion um, in my sinuses where there might be still a little bit of inflammation and it's something that is very dealable. It's not really that bad. It's just like, okay, maybe I shouldn't eat so many peppers and tomatoes and eat something else right now. It, I, I used to have migraine headaches and things, so I don't get any of those symptoms anymore. I feel 100%, 98% of the time, and if I'm not feeling 100%, I'm still feeling great. And if I do have these really mild things, they're nothing that debilitates me by any means. So, um... You know, there's things that sometimes you will notice when you're on, on living foods for a while that you'll notice um, some things that might aggravate you. And I talked about this in another video where I don't do cacao powder and I really limit caffeine. I used to still drink some matcha tea. Now I may have it once in a great while, but I'm not big on uh, having a lot of caffeine and that the cacao powder actually makes me feel like I have a hangover. So I'm learning my body more and more, and I think that that's important. One thing that I've not really noticed a huge change in is my eyesight. I'm nearsighted, which means that I can't see from far away. Um, I will use, occasionally I, I have a pair of glasses that I put on, and sometimes I'll wear contacts. Right now I'm not wearing them. Lately I haven't been wearing them a lot. If I go to church, I try to put them on because I can't still see the screen. And I know that a lot of people have said that they ended up with 2020 vision, and I've been on raw foods for five years now, and I still can't really see. However, um, which I can see good from close up and things, but I, I just, it's, if, if you're a person who's nearsighted, you would understand that when you're looking at things from far away, it's not that you can't see, you just can't see real detail like words and stuff like that. So that would really affect somebody who is trying to read a screen really far away in a church that has words that you're trying to sing or whatever. So, but I also had had my, went for my, I do this at Walmart where every year or so I have my eyes checked and to see if they've changed and they are getting a little bit better. It's like a point difference or two. It's not a lot. But uh, it actually, she did say that it, it, it made a difference. And I said, do you think maybe a, that's progression? She said, well, it could be, you know, but there's no telling um, that could be from raw foods. I try to incorporate 
carrots all the time now and lately i love carrots when i was growing up that was like i loved greens i always had but i would not like to eat carrots and so i sometimes think that maybe that might have something to do with it so i drink more carrot juice add more carrots and things and hope for the best that that might get better and better um of course I'm a believer and I try to keep having a positive attitude and hope that my eyes will get 2020, but I don't really know for sure that that's ever going to happen. And I won't go off of raw foods just because I don't end up with 2020 vision. So those are things that I don't notice big differences with in this journey, not huge anyway, but huger differences that I do notice is I, I don't have any more chronic fatigue. I have loads of energy. I feel good all the time. And that is something that I didn't always have. You know, I used to drag a lot. Um, <clears throat> I had a lot of problems with just being, like I've mentioned, chronically fatigued and just exhausted and I would have to come home and take naps I I you know when I came home from work sometimes I would have to take a nap I no longer have any of that um, adrenal fatigue I've gotten over that I don't feel like my adrenals are burnt out anymore so I'm still progressing and one of the biggest major things that I have seen and I have watched a few different raw foodists that have talked and said that they even though they've been on raw foods their hair is still thin and fine and i've always had finer hair not necessarily thin but on the finer side <clears throat> my hair has done a turnaround for me it's like i have twice the amount of hair or something i'm a beautician and i've always been into the beauty field and i have Wore, used to wear extensions in my hair because of the lack of hair that I, I had and I no longer wear them. My hair has expanded. My hair keeps growing a lot faster. It is getting thicker. It's like I have twice the amount and right now what it looks like is what it looked like with me with a bunch of extensions without wearing them. It's amazing. The growth, the strength, it has more body to it. It just has really changed. And the longer I'm on this, my hair is just growing in abundance. I, I don't know why some people don't have that experience. I just know that it changed for me. I have seen people talk about eye color changes. And then some people say that they don't have an eye color change. And some people have ended up with blue eyes. I don't know if I really believe that to a, a total full spectrum, whether you're actually going to go from having green eyes your whole life to blue eyes. My eyes are more on the green side. They've been mistaken for blue because at times they do look blue. However, it, they have looked clearer and brighter and they do seem to be really looking a, a more vivid color than what they used to. There were times before I went on raw where they even looked a little more gray. So I have seen differences. I don't think they're going to turn into like a real true blue. Um, the people that I have seen that have said that their eyes did turn from a blue to a murky green, um, seem to have those genetics to have been born with blue eyes and then maybe they got darker as time went on through being sick and the toxins that add up in the body and all of the things that we have done I do believe that um, the eyes do look clearer and can get maybe lighter and brighter so those are just things that I've noticed as far as my weight goes, and people have asked me questions about this. Being in cosmetology, I have a lot of customers and different people that ask me questions. I have people that I went to school with 
on Facebook and Instagram and different places that have asked me different questions about different things about my weight and how I keep my weight down and things of that nature and I've always been into exercise so I don't know that I really ever was overweight but I can say that I did weigh 10 to 12 pounds more than I do now on raw foods and when I first got on raw foods I was losing weight pretty rapidly and it it just seemed to be falling off of me um I don't know why that is because I've been either vegetarian pescatarian I have not eaten any meat in 30 years so um, the breads I stopped in 2013 I stopped eating breads and I did lose weight from just quitting bread um, I started incorporating more raw food somewhere between 2014 and 15 and somewhere around 16 I was eating lots more raw foods and very little still dairy products which were giving me trouble because of the mucus that that, that causes and I don't know um, that I believed full heartedly that eating fully raw not adding some of that stuff was good I think that I still believed certain things and I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that believing things is really important and I think that if you still think that eating things like milk and cheese that your bones are going to fall apart and all that kind of stuff um you you a lot of times if you believe that you're not going to understand why you need to eliminate these things and that's kind of what i was holding on to i really didn't eat a standard diet i've always been trying to be really healthy and when i was eating cheese it was like maybe just a little bit of feta and some goat cheeses not a lot of extreme things like pizzas and mozzarella cheese i didn't eat all that stuff for many years but because i was still um putting some of it into my diet I was still having some allergy symptoms which have subsided to almost nothing at all and I have some little allergy things that I do with ginger and garlic and lemon that completely if I have even the littlest slightest bit it completely eliminates the problem so I really don't have a problem with those things anymore and now that I'm glad that I eliminated cheese and dairy products and those things. But talking about how to believe in this lifestyle, I think is really important because if you're going along and you're paranoid that you're missing certain things and you don't really understand the concept of this lifestyle, it can really be hard to not be listening to other people that we've been trained with the government and with everything around us to believe in certain things that we've been taught through the years sort of a form of brainwashing so i just wanted to say that and that my progression is really growing as far as my weight goes yes i am even skinnier than i was before i used to be a little more kind of curvy and now i'm really kind of a, a lot thinner i'm happy with it i do a lot of exercises and always have but my exercises are different now that i do and i believe in exercises i believe in the lymphatic system and i use a mini trampoline and i do a little bit of that each day sometimes i do 30 minutes and i believe in really using a lot of muscle and trying to make your body do things that it doesn't want to do in order to be able to keep good muscle tone and i'm really really into that stuff i'm also very into stretching and how important stretch 
stretching is I can't stress enough that people, even younger people, it's even more important as you get older. But for younger people, they can get hurt if they don't stretch and things. So I incorporate all of these things along with a raw food lifestyle and have seen miraculous changes through the years. And I don't have any trouble with my weight. I'm happy with where my weight is. I feel strong. I'm very flexible. And I'm also really short, kind of like a hobbit. I'm five foot two. So I'm kind of a tiny person anyway. But the way that I feel in my body feels really good. And the, the lifestyle of eating raw foods has changed my life completely. No matter what I did for many years, I never got the actual full results that I, I keep getting tongue tied. I'm sorry, I can't speak right sometimes. But I've never gotten the full results that I got from eating a raw vegan lifestyle. And I'll say this over and over again. I cannot stress or believe enough at how living foods have changed my life, my energy, my attitude. And I've been growing in my spirituality with the Lord Jesus Christ and learning lots of things that I never was able to have the tension span to learn. And sometimes I have to do things in little small doses still because I've always been kind of hyper and it's hard for me to sit still and read for hours at a time. But I am learning how to do these things and grow slowly in my life and my journey as I'm aging and I'm trying to age gracefully. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And the only reason why I decided to do this is because I've had ongoing people besides on YouTube, um, people that I know from the past on Facebook and people I grew up with, people that sit in my chair that I do their hair and I'm down to only working a few days a week. I had my own salon. I have been closing down my own salon and will be renting a booth just two days a week. And that's another long story with COVID and other things going on and trying to keep stress at a level and things like that are also very important to me. But I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these things because of the fact that it's been such a highly requested thing and some people that I know they're like, I don't know about this raw food and this vegan stuff. I don't know anything about it. And I don't know if I would be interested in that, but I'd certainly be interested to know uh, about things about the hair and the face. And why is your face not collapsing? Why, why does your skin look so good? And these are questions that I get from people. So because it was so highly requested, I tried to get it involved in my raw foods and all of these things kind of come together as one big thing that I believe in doing things naturally. And I'll just talk about some of those things. Nothing on my face as far as Botox, as far as fillers, or plastic surgery. So those are things that I have not had done on my face and I have reasons why I don't believe in those things. So starting off with reason number one why I don't do those things is A, it's way too expensive anyway even for me to think about. But I think that if I wanted to get something done and I set my mind to it. I believe that I could do anything that I want to if financially I really wanted to do that. But really the reason why I don't believe in Botox and fillers and all that kind of stuff is because I don't really think that those things are actually solving the problem and they don't last. So. Had I thought about those things? Yes, I have. And I've taken the considerations, you know, and the different reasons. And some people 
say, well, you know, they've said to me, well, you know, those things aren't vegan. I really never thought about whether they were vegan or not. I don't even know if that would be something that would be one of the important things why I wouldn't do it. Besides the fact that the main reason why I wouldn't do it is because they're toxic. And, you know, one of the things, especially like Botox is very toxic and everything. So, you know, I don't really want to be putting toxic things into my body when I barely even want to use caffeine or anything. And I don't want to, you know, I've gotten rid of the mercury albums in my mouth and things of that nature because I didn't want mercury in my mouth. And so, you know, I'd really have to consider whether I wanted to put a toxin into my body. Now, I'm going to be honest with the Botox situation about maybe eight years ago. And I was really thinking that I was starting to get some wrinkles in my forehead. And I tried Botox and I did it three times. And this is, was the reason at that time. And this was even before I even had went uh, raw or anything or completely raw. And I decided that it's just not for me, even though the results were kind of nice because you want to think about your forehead just looking like a baby's butt or something. But the thing is, is that, you know, I don't want to, even if I wasn't vegan and I didn't want, I didn't care about putting toxic things into my body, which at that time, I don't even think I ever really took that kind of stuff into consideration because that was before I even started reading about stuff like that. But the thing that I found from not being able to move the muscles and then after the use of doing that and what ends up the results later, it's just not really worth to me having to go in like a drug addict or something and keep doing these same things over and over and over again and they don't even last. Um, plastic surgery, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't consider that, but there are risks to that and I don't really like the idea of cutting and uh, knives going into my face and things. And the thing is, as you keep on um, pulling the skin, it's got to go somewhere. So after a while, I don't like the, the long-term results on a lot of that stuff, if I can help it. So prior to my three-time use eight years ago, I have not had anything like that. And as far as fillers and all that, I don't even fool with any of that stuff. So I don't know anything about that. I know a little bit more about the Botox and know that that kind of uh, freezes the muscle or whatever. But whenever I stopped doing that and I was starting to think about some other options as far as natural stuff, which I want to say that although I didn't study a lot about things in the body being toxic at that time and stuff of that nature, I was always trying to stick to natural things. And even though I'm a beautician, I'm actually more of a barber and didn't really fool with a lot of chemicals. And I don't even put a lot of toxic chemicals in my own hair. Although I did use a lot of toxic chemicals as far as makeup and skincare in the past. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. So when I went raw and I started to read and realize about a lot of these things that are going into my body, that's when I started to change those things more. But I was always kind of concerned about breathing in lots and lots of toxic chemicals by doing colors and all those things. So I really didn't offer a lot of that stuff. I do a little bit of light highlighting, pulling through a cap on occasion and used to do quick things because I was in a, a quick in and out service. And, um, you know, we used a couple of things like bleach for that and didn't really do all the colors and just did cuts. Um, and they were more like in and out haircuts that just, um, 
lasted like 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that, depending on, and that's still pretty much the nature of my business. So I haven't been subjected to breathing in a lot of chemicals. And I was always concerned with that and became more concerned as I got into raw foods and stuff. So, you know, um, I started off when I got into raw foods by reading this book by Marcus Rothkranz on how to heal the face. And I was interested in that because I had some things going on from sun damage, which I had a little bit of some spots. I'm pointing over here because that was where I had something on my face that it would, in the wintertime, look quite dark. And in the summer, it didn't really, you didn't notice it because when I got tan, it just kind of went away. And some little spots that when I read, the, read this book, I started to understand some different things about cleaning the liver and different things in your body that could be going on causing these things. And I honestly could tell you that I have seen miraculous changes in my skin as far as the pigmentation. As far as lots of wrinkles and stuff, I didn't have skin that was really highly wrinkly at the time that I went on that, but I do, do start seeing some things in my forehead. And those were the things when I started using face aerobics and face yoga, which I've talked about in another video that I don't use yoga as far as body yoga for purposes in my spiritual beliefs but as far as for the face that is not bowing down to any gods or doing anything like that it's just doing stuff to tighten the muscles so I started getting into facial yoga when I started talking to this woman that came in and she was an Indian lady that did facial yoga and the reason I had asked her about it was because her skin and she was probably at that time in her 60s somewhere maybe about 64 closer to retired age and she had absolutely no sagging and no wrinkles on her skin and i asked her about it and told her that i was noticing only in my forehead that i didn't like what i was seeing and she showed me some forehead exercises and she said this is something in my culture and something that her mother had always done that she believed in and I started studying into some of that which is a mixture between aerobics and yoga facial because of the fact that aerobics is more repetitive movement and some of the yoga is more holding positions in the face but like raw food, I can't stress enough that I believe in this full heartedly and think that this has done miraculous things for me because right around the time that I got onto raw foods was right around that time when I started seeing more signs of aging than I had noticed before. I was always very lucky and probably had good genes as far as just getting real wrinkly or whatever. Um, I plus not smoking and things of that nature have a lot to do with a lot of things. But I do highly believe in this uh, face program. And so um, I have been doing this happy face yoga and these, this particular program I think is very, very effective. There's also a, a, a lot of other effective programs out there. There's a lady called PETA. And I think her program, which she does a lot of repetitive moves, I think that the mixture between um, some of these are good. Some people will say you shouldn't go and do too many different exercises. I pretty much have stuck with those two. This particular face that I was just talking about, um, has a lot of very strong movements in there. And there's a lot for the, fo the forehead, the eyes. And another thing that I have noticed a great change in is my neck. The two things that I was seeing more in was more my neck and around my forehead. And those things have just about disappeared 
and I strongly know that it's from doing the facial yoga programs and it helps to be eating raw foods for many reasons. One of the reasons why raw foods does things to help you anti-age, I believe is because I think that cooking has a lot of elements in the nature of burning oils and all of those things that have things called ages in them. They're actually spelled A-G-E-S. And those are things that, especially if you're frying foods and overcooking foods and eating meat that is, um, you know, getting like real, real cooked in those charcoal uh, pieces that you eat, that stuff is very aging on the skin. And I've kind of known a lot of that stuff for many years, but I have studied a lot of different things for a lot of years. And, you know, I have a lot of knowledge through all my time into these things and little things that I have learned in time. And so that's one of the reasons why I think that raw foods is anti-aging, but I also think that when you eliminate breads and especially because breads turn into sugar and the processed sugars which a lot of us are starting to realize that processed sugar is one of the worst things for the skin and it breaks down the collagen in the skin and everybody wants to know what to eat for collagen and all of these things and right now i could always say sea moss sea moss and sea moss because i really believe that sea moss is great for the collagen of the skin as far as a lot of these other things out there like um you know powders and things like that i think that a lot of those things just have some things that you would get from your foods i really believe in foods as being things that fight and work with the collagen but i think that eating a lot of fruit and a lot of the water content and drinking a lot of water which i believe in distilled water and things of those nature because of course you don't want your skin to dry out but i feel that all these things play a role cleaning your liver plays a role in the skin and if you're seeing things on the skin and i talked about that kidneys in this book talks about a lot of that stuff and you know when i first went on raw foods and i was interested in those things i i decided to get that book and read it and then that was years ago now and i have also started to incorporate all these other things and have continued to see changes through my progress on raw foods and through many many different things so i also want to say that i do not use makeup with any toxic things in it and i go a couple of days a week without makeup and give my skin a break and let it get air i believe in walking without makeup and you know doing things outside in nature and letting your face breathe and adding some of the makeup on other days, I make sure that they don't have certain bad things in it. I will do a video on that if it becomes a high request on things that I use and don't use as far as makeup products and, and things of that nature. Um, but I definitely make sure that I spend a little bit more on really clean stuff and I don't use cleaning stuff on my skin. I use green tea and coconut oil and things of that nature some people say that coconut oil may break them out and there's other things that you can use that don't have all the toxic stuff in it that might not be as oily some people may have more trouble with oils and i do have some solutions for that and there are some at home gadgets that i've used that i think are really great that i'd like to do a video in the future on some of that stuff that actually is like um microderm abrasion type things and things of that nature for at home use and uh red light therapy i believe in a little bit of that 
because I think that the red lights do kind of tighten up the skin, help to tighten up the skin. The blue lights are more for the, um, the acne and things of that nature. So some of the things that I do use that I will talk about in this video that I highly believe in that I have become a fan of is that I do like some of the Mad Hippie products, which this is a, a moisturizing spray. I get all this stuff you can get on Amazon. I do not have links because I have not tried selling things or adding in links, but this is a vitamin A and I like the vitamin C because this will brighten the skin. And I have something that I use that is a, a polishing mask. And I like masks. I like to use matcha masks, which I just add some honey. And um, as far as being vegan, I do use honey. I am one of those vegans that believes in honey. I love honey. I love honey on the skin. And I also love to use these um, silkworms. I love silkworms. They are from caterpillars. The caterpillars are not killed to make them. They only have a certain life expectancy. And there's a protein that comes out of those. And I believe very highly in exfoliating the skin and doing tiny little circular uh, motion where you use water and you put them in water for about 15 minutes or so and um every maybe week i will use a more abrasive kind of a exfoliation or whatever but i don't believe in very abrasive things on the skin i that's one of the reason why i like the silkworms because i could do that daily and i also think that you can exfoliate with um, some of those uh, shaver type things. I forget what they're called, but I really think that stuff like that helps. People always said that men have kept good skin because they shave. So I think that that's part of the reason why women should exfoliate the skin also. And I also have to say that one of my biggest things that I'm a firm believer in this, I could not stress more. I keep this little pouch and I have two different kinds of gua sha. And one is from Jade Stone and one is from Rose Quartz. And these are the real thing as far as that. And I don't necessarily, unless you believe in the stones, think that it has to be the real thing you might have to sometimes search and sometimes you may know or you may not know i don't really know that the stones themselves makes a difference however i do think that the use of using the gua sha makes differences because i think that it's very good for the jawline there are some programs out there that are on YouTube, like uh, Moments, I think that it's called, where a girl goes through an actual facial program. And I know that just running it up the jaw and going up in upward motions really does lift. And I swear by it. And I've had different people say that, oh, that's not true, that these are things people have used for years, but they said, oh, well, it's because of the scraping that they used to do. No, it's not because of the scraping. I believe that it is actually lifting and has an accumulative effect between facial aerobic movements and using these things on a daily basis. And it's all about habits, getting into habits every day that you just do like brushing your teeth that does lift the face and also not only does it lift the face but the the gouaches are also good for lymphatic system and i'm very big on lymphatic drainage because at the end of when you use these you know and you you go through the um afterward the neck you 
are draining that stuff down. So um, I also have a brush that I use and I, I don't have that here, it's in my bathroom, but brushing is good for the lymphatic system under the arms and even dry brushing on the face. Those are things that I do. But as far as the face yoga and the gua sha, I cannot say enough about how much I believe in that. I believe in that as much as I believe in raw foods as far as f facial tone and everything. Um, but I, I think that this is lifting and you also have to realize that if you're going to work the body, there are muscles in the face. And so, um, you know, when you get older around your eyes in this area starts to get thinner in the skin. So when you add these facial moment, um, facial moments, these facial positions, you are able to start strengthening some of this stuff. And around the uh, cheekbones and things of that nature, and doing things that you're doing, um, like you're using a weight, and you're holding your face, and doing repetitions, this is lifting and lifting these areas and this is where as you age even if you're a person that ages kind of gracefully you do start seeing some things kind of going down in the corners of your eyes and things and you see people with these um chins that have extra extra um skin or fat or they're not lifted these are things that keep them in place just like exercise and i could never understand why people go to the gym and they do all these exercises on their body like i do i have a vigorous program of all these things that i do that take me about two hours a day but i get up very early in the morning to do these things along with smoothies and trying to juice and drinking a lot of water. I mean, all these things are incorporated and the results that I have is the fact that, that I have all these grandchildren and I'm 54 years old and I do have seven grandkids and two of my husband's, which makes nine total and um, that I don't have this, the saggy skin as much as other people that aren't doing it or people that are complaining is what I'm saying. So I do believe that these are actually the full blown reasons. And I know that some people don't believe in raw foods. They don't believe in facial exercises and they'll say, oh, well that stuff making faces in the mirror. My husband's used to seeing me do this in the morning and sometimes he'll make these faces he thinks it's funny but i i think that he knows that it works i think that he believes that um these are some of the reasons um why i stay in shape on my body and in my face so um another thing that i like to use is um this is a roller and i like to put this in the refrigerator and this is just something that when you are going to work or you're going out and you want to have not, you know, people get bags and, you know, this has a very cooling effect and an accumulative effect. I do believe the use of these things on a regular basis you see in time more and more. And so this is um, another thing. This is something, it's called Convera Skin. I, I do think that this helps a lot with under the eyes. If anybody would to be interested, I just get it off of Amazon. But this um, helps. Because I was an allergy sufferer, I always had trouble with underneath my eyes and in the morning if you have that puffiness and stuff like that nobody wants to look their best and be puffy so these are the things that i do and i keep these little things in my refrigerator and the guashas some people believe in putting those in the refrigerator also so these are the things that i do i'm real careful about 
the safety of all of the things that I put on my skin also. And I would really encourage women out there, even men, if they're interested in skincare, I know it's mostly a woman thing, but that you really find safe ways if you like to wear makeup like I do. And that if you like to use um, different oils are really a lot better than a lot of creams out there. I have, I do like to use shea butter and I make my little own creams that I add my own oils in once in a while if I want some cream. I really don't buy a lot of uh, peptide lifters and all these different things because they start to get really costly and the oils go a long ways and I can add those into and buy my own different things and not have to spend as much money and plus a lot of these things have hidden ingredients in them and I try to make sure my oils are more organic and things of that nature because while we're trying to clean our bodies out these things are things that are going in through our skin so that's another really important thing I hope that this kind of helped some people that are interested in this I also want to say that if you're somebody that is like 22 years old that sometimes I don't really think that using facial um, manipulation which I don't use any gadgets I just use my hands and use the um, gua sha but I don't have any of these exercise machines and things that people use like I've seen these jaw things I, I don't buy all that stuff um, but I've seen people that have said that they've um, seen stretching in their skin that are young people I really don't think need it when you start getting into your 30s you will start noticing differences and when you see those differences you can start adding little things just depending on what you think that you need to use and you know because I think that when you're in your 20s your face is really not having um, any of that sagging or stretching and you can use too much pressure and actually create wrinkles and things so you do have to be careful this is not a quick fix nothing is a quick fix it takes work it takes determination it takes things that you do daily along with eating healthy and things to see the results and learning what things are starting to show differences i also like the face aerobics and things because of the fact that i think the stimulation does so much that you'll start to notice um more color in your skin and people say to me how come my skin has a glow to it and so i do think that a lot of these things have a lot of things to do with it and i'm just going to put it all down to habits daily habits that you can get into and you can start off with 10 minutes a day and look into some of these things and see that you start seeing differences and it may not happen overnight but if you believe in anything um, and you're interested in it i'm definitely somebody that would be the biggest advocate for promoting all of these things because I highly believe in these things. So I'm just going to kind of close with that and I'm going to read this out of Romans and this is chapter 12 verse 12 and it says rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up let me know what your thoughts are on these subjects and what things that you would like me to talk about. I'm always glad to hear different things on what people want me to talk about. And I'd be glad to make more videos on some of these topics. And just let me know. Let me know in the description down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and have a wonderful, blessed day.